sounds about right. So we have a problem. It is so good to meet you. Calm yourself. There is something I want to give you. Who are you? Sorry, it's a different keyboard than I'm used to. There you go. I'm Sven. Um, Great name. So, uh, we're in character creation. I can select uh, my background. Uh, so these are all the Dungeons and Dragons backgrounds that you know, if you play Dungeons and Dragons. I can change my body type, I can change my race, so I can play as a tiefling, I can play as a drow, I can play as a human, I can play as a git Yankee, I can play as a dwarf, I can play as an elf, I can play as a half-elf, I can play as a half-drow, I can play as a halfling. And uh, there's more, but we're only showing a few. Uh, these are the races that will be going into early access, and there are more will be added afterwards. And so depending on which race I pick, I get different features. Uh, I can also Abilities. select which class I'm going to play. We have six classes that will Magic. be available on early access from the get-go, and then we'll just add more as we, pro we progress. Um, you uh, so I can play as a wizard, a cleric, a fighter, a ranger, rogue, and warlock, and then I can pick uh, the abilities, uh, ability points that go with that and select my skills in which I'm going to be proficient. Today we're going to play an origin story, so we have different origin stories. Uh, there's going to be five that are going to be in early access, there will be more after. Uh, so this is Lizelle, she's the girl you saw in the intro, so she is a Git Yankee. Uh, Gale is a wizard, uh, he has a very big problem, and that's pretty much that he's going to explode. Um, Shadowheart, she's a uh, dark cleric, uh, so she's got quite a story too. Will is a monster hunter who made a pact with the devil, he regrets it. Um, and today we're going to play as Astarian, who is a vampire spawn. Uh, he's a noble, uh, so vampire spawn is not really a vampire, he has a vampire, a vampire to which he is a slave. Uh, he's a high elf, which means that we get to select a cantrip for him. So we're going to pick Mage Hand because we're going to do cool things with it. And all the rest is already preset for him, so we just have to click the Venture Forth button and we can continue our adventure.
so we're going to skip the tutorial uh, because it's not ready yet. Uh, and so I'll tell you what happens in the tutorial, or at least in a nutshell. Uh, we're going to capture that Nautiloid. We're going to uh, do that together with the Git uh, warrior that you saw captured in the intro. And uh, we're going to teleport it to a place called Faerun, uh, more specifically to the Sword Coast, more specifically 200 miles to the east of uh, Baldur's Gate. That was, by the way, the city that you saw destroyed. It's not Baldur's Gate, it was Yartar. <laughs> Goodbye, Yartar. Uh, uh, oh, yeah. Daylight. It can't be. What the hell is going on? So what I forgot to mention is that my vampire spawn normally can't walk in the sunlight. He can't go over running water and he needs an invitation if he wants to enter somewhere. Uh, but apparently he can walk in the sunlight, so that's kind of handy for us. Um, so he's going to try to figure out what's going on. So uh, I can control the camera and put it in third person. Uh, so then it's running behind me. Or I can just go back top down and then basically play it in a yeah, traditional manner. So I'm going to like going like this and let's have a look at what we can find. Have a look over there. Good sunlight. So this is a, a river, it's called the Kayontar. Better not push my luck. And it reaches all the way to Baldur's Gate, but we have no boat, so we're gonna have to go in a different direction. Uh, obviously, you can see that it's been a lot of fun over here. It's a mangled fisher, with a little letter. Perfectly good blood. Um, with the love letter is none of my business. So. Was the sky always this blue? It's magnificent. Starin doesn't really care about the fact that everybody's dead. Uh, apple. She is banging at that door, so let's go ask and introduce ourselves. Blasted doors, I... What? Oh, it's you. I saw you on the ship. You survived, then. Suddenly I saw what she saw, felt what she felt. Anger. Confusion. Resolve. Ah! Uh, you. You've got the same thing I do. In your head. I felt it. Okay, so I have a whole bunch of dialogue options. Uh, so what just happened to us is because of the tadpole. I was already introduced to that in the tutorial. We call it mind melding. Uh, so we both have a tadpole in our head and uh, we can telepathically uh, connect to each other. Uh, but I'm also very hungry. So I'm playing this from the point of view of Astarin, Vampire Spawn. Uh, so you will see that all of my choices will be tailored to uh, being Astarin, essentially. So I'm gonna stare at her and realize that I'm very hungry. What's the matter with you? Has that tadpole scrambled your brain already? So I can basically say, okay, well, I'll just uh, feed, uh, or uh, I can swallow my urge and find ignorance, which is what I'm gonna do because I uh, need a companion. Come on, the chase through hell, the creatures, what they did to us, the tadpole, that thing is going to consume us from the inside and turn us into mind flayers. You and I need a healer. Finding one won't be easy in this wilderness. We'll need supplies. I'm hoping something of use might be behind these doors. But I've barely made a dent in them so far. Okay, so I can offer to help her, but I'm a rogue also, so I can tell her to save her strength, then that I'll pick the lock. By all means. I'm going to see what's at the top of this cliff. Hopefully there's no more of these creatures along the way. Uh, I uh, will, well, actually, I'll suggest that we join forces and say that that gives us better also survival. Or just company for our final moments. But you're right. Whatever lies ahead will be a little less daunting with support. You can call me Shadowheart. Uh, I can tell her that I'm a star in a reformed vampire spawn who can walk in the sunlight, uh, or I can uh, choose not to tell her, which is a good idea. Uh, and uh, I can also question her what she knows about the things in each of our heads. Very little. Supposedly, those monsters breed by planting their tadpoles in people's heads. Over time, the infected victim turns into a mind flare. I don't remember how long it takes, but we should hurry. So that's a problem. I'll introduce myself, Astarian. Lead the way, Astarian. And I've made my first companion. 
try to lockpick that door. But I don't have a lockpick, so that's not gonna. So, oops, and I got myself into the door. All right, uh, let's see if this fine gentleman has something of use if he doesn't. Uh, so let's continue, see where I'm end up. More of those wretched things. Oops. So that's usually an introduction to combat when you see something like that. So let's try uh, and see what that is. Where are they? Oh yeah, this is. So combat is turn-based because Dungeons and Dragons is a turn-based system. So we base ourselves on that. I need to be very careful for these uh, intellect divorce because if they get too close to me, it will be very painful. Uh, this can actually end up in a party wipe, but I'll do my very best not to let that happen. I'm going to seek the high ground in Dungeons and Dragons. Seeking advantage allows you to roll twice, which is a good idea because there's a lot of dice rolling going on behind the scenes. Uh, as you'll soon see. Uh, we translate the dice rolls into percentages so that you don't have to do all the mathematics yourself. So this gives me a 90% chance to hit, so that's a pretty good one. Also... <laughs> uh, uh, I'll, I'll manage, don't worry about it. That's a 45%, that's not so good. Uh, but let's try. Uh, I'm casting second fire, let's see what that goes. Right, to puny two damage. Uh, so if you're curious to know how the calculations are going happening, they're happening behind the scenes here. You can just hover over it and then you can learn all of the, um, the math behind. The numbers that you see, which is why Jesse said lots of numbers. Um, we're going to be very brave and we're just going to go up there. Um, and then I'm going to see how far I can get the star in because I don't want him to die right away. All right, Shadowheart. Well, she's not really me, she's just my recruit, so... Got shield of Fave of her. The bonus actions, these are my actions, these are my bonus actions. You just see, yeah, it says AP, it's a little bit misleading, uh, but it's actually just the actions that you have. Uh, but sometimes you can have two of them. Uh, so, I'm going to end my turn, and now it's the enemy's turn. Let's see what they do. Unfortunately, they can jump, but that's good. That's actually not that bad. Uh, so what I'm going to do with Shadow Heart is I'm going to try something that's a little bit risky, but sometimes works. Uh, I'm going to use Shove, and I'm going to try to... Oh, it's going to work. Yeah, there you go. So that guy is a little bit further from me, and then uh, she can still hammer at that guy. It's really not hitting very well. Uh, and then I'm going to shoot with a star at that guy. So yeah, we're doing pretty good, actually. Ooh. Ooh. So, combat is fairly high stakes, as you can see. <laughs> um, so, they have a reaction, so that basically means if she walks away from here, they're going to hit her, which is not good. Um, so, what I'm going to do, and he, and he can't walk. Yeah. Uh, so, I have a jump. I didn't want to use it yet. Uh, but first I'm going to, oh man, uh, let's jump as a bonus action in DG3. So that means that I can't use another bonus action, but it acts as a disengage also. And it's enhanced by my death ball that I have in, inside of me. Uh, I do have one action that I can still do. So I'm just going to try it out. This is my mage hand. My mage hand is bad at many things, but it's very good at throwing stuff. Uh, so I'm going to... Just slap it. There you go. Uh, that's I wanted to show this to you today, but you have no idea how nervous I was about doing it because I was going to get in this situation. So I obviously should have approached them in a completely different manner. We'll see in the next combat how you can actually be much more strategic. On it. Famous last words, I guess. But uh, we'll see. All right. Um, she is hurting, so she's going to drink my first healing potion. I don't have a lot of them. Then she's just gonna. Well, actually, so I don't want to use it up. I'll just smack it like this. Maybe I'll get that. Okay, uh, all right. Well, can I run even further? No. <laughs> all right. Let's, here it comes. That's good. Oh no 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 no. And it's getting back up. Very high stakes. Um, he's hiding for the shot. That's interesting. 
Okay. Um, Mage Hand, where are you? Do your thing. It's 80%. So, sorry. Yeah, you can also throw uh, bodies that you find in the world, but it's not working. So that's why I'm using the shove, actually. I mean, it's working, but it doesn't look as good. Oh, why did I go to sneak? I misclicked. Really, did I put my hand into sneak? That's really clever. Uh, uh, okay, so... Yeah, the, the announcement was that it was going to be live, I think, so there you go. All right, 90% shot. That should, oh, yeah, actually, I have a pin-down attack, which is a uh, action that you get with your weapon. So each weapon that you get gives you an extra type of action. Uh, yes, you're, I know that you're sneaking. Um, hey, come on. Right. <laughs> you got this. You got this. Uh, hold on. Uh, I have a plan. I have a plan. I got a bottle with grease, so I'm just gonna. Throw can you stop hand? And I normally he's not supposed to be able to hit like this. Actually, can you? Can't you do anything useful? If, if they want to attack you, maybe. Ooh. Oh, they killed. No, they didn't kill hand. Okay. All right. So oh, they did kill hand. Yeah, hand is not supposed to die, but. Um, well, it's going swimmingly. Okay, so I wanted to throw, um, so I have a throw action. I can throw pretty much everything. In a presentation I did previously, I threw my boots. Uh, so for comedial effect, I'll just throw my boots. Maybe I'll actually just kill him. Oh, that's it. Good work, good work. <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> that's not that bad, actually. Um, so, where is she? Can I, oops, she doesn't want to close anymore. You want to keep on throwing? No, it's entered, yeah. Please close. That's, so, she's down, she's not dead yet. So, that's the good news. Um, so, basically how this works is, uh, this is death saving throw, so, uh, each turn, uh, there's going to be a roll behind the scenes, and if it's a good roll, uh, then we're going to get a little blue spot like this, and if we have three of them, she gets stabilized, which is cool. And if we get three red ones, because it's a bad roll, then she dies. And uh, they are going to keep on hitting at her, because if she goes to the negative of her, ma of her maximum HP, she dies too. So uh, we're going to try to avoid that from happening. Uh, but I'm really not... Okay, so... I shouldn't have thrown the boost, by the way. That was a really stupid move. Um, this looks like a really good hit. Good. Excellent. And we have one guy left. Uh, thank you. Uh, why? Uh -huh. Okay, well, let's hope that this one is going to go right. I did tell you that... Oh, stand up, stand up, no, stand up. Hold on, does this work? Uh, I, I was too late. All right, so, so I do have... The save game problem is real, so... <laughs> it is genuine, so I need to restart. So I'm just going to do a quick restart. I'll just do it as fast, and then we'll just... We'll do Q&A for five minutes. <laughs> you got it out of the way early. Yeah, that's why they gave us a half hour extra, Jesse. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> You're fine. I'll, uh, I'll just sneak past the fight and we'll go to the next one. Because otherwise, we might be in trouble. <laughs> Luckily for you, we have a save button. So good allow me to, to rapidly. Uh, let me do that. Oh, my cantrip. Take my trusty mage hand. Let Adventure me. 4. Go forward into the game. And uh, I will recruit Shadowheart again, so I'll do that in the shortest possible manner. And then I suggest we try to avoid the intellect divorce, take a different route if we can. And if we can't, well, we'll have to fight them again before we proceed with our adventure. So yeah, I've done this, like, we've done a press tour in the last three weeks, and I've done this like 30, 40 times. Um, 
I in general do not die on it. Uh, although it's all, always tight. But it's daylight. Meanwhile, we can also look at a few other features of the game. I'm gonna make them walk over there. What the hell is this going on? Yeah. We're gonna just let Astarian run, run Astarian, run, 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 run over here. Thank you. So, meantime, we can have a look at uh, the backside of the UI. So, uh, this is where you see all my equipment. Here you see all of my abilities, and so when you click Close on them, the you see uh, your skills, uh, your distances. And this is my spell book, uh, where uh, the spells that I know are going to be learned. Uh, okay. Right. Blasted doors, I... What? Oh, it's you. I saw you on the ship. You survived, then. Suddenly, I saw what she saw, felt what she felt. Anger, confusion, resolve. Ah! You. You've got the same thing I do. In your head. I felt it. Okay, so I'm just going to be very nice and, uh, well, actually, well, no, I'm just going to recruit her right Come away. On. The chase through hell, the creatures, what they did to us, the tadpole. That thing is going to consume us from the inside and turn us into mind flayers. You and I need a healer. Finding one won't be easy in this wilderness. We'll need supplies. I'm hoping something of use might be behind these doors. But I've barely made a dent in them so far. Uh, I'm gonna help be you. Be my guest, but that door's too strong. Maybe there's another way, up the cliff. I really like that cliff. Hopefully there's no more of these things. Uh. <laughs> or just company for our final moments. Well, that was true. But you're right. Whatever lies ahead will be a little less daunting with support. You can call me Shadowheart. Yep, I'm a star. Lead the way, Star. Do you All want right. to take an audience vote on if we do this fight again? Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Okay. So now I'm doing. I'm gonna play it like a pro. Do it really well, and I'll show a few other things. First of all, I am gonna dip my bow into the fire. There we go. Then I'm gonna press this button, which allows me to enter turn-based mode outside of combat. And so, in that way, you can sneak up on people and you can do all kinds of things that they don't expect you to do. And then, uh, basically, the way that that works is that they have six uh, seconds. Oh, yeah, see, these are... Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> I wonder if I can make this shot. It's too far, right? He hasn't seen me. He cannot reach me. Okay. It's the enemy's turn. So they get to patrol for six seconds. But they're not doing anything. That's good. You see that over there? That's explosive. So I'm going to try to get there. And shoot it. 96%. Yo! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Shadowheart is still waiting for me. Like, I'll make her join combat. Much better. I feel much more relaxed about this fight. Um, I'm gonna pin him down so he can't get too close. There you go. This is how it's supposed to be. And then I did actually have a very strong attack, but I never got to use it, which is guiding bolt. Uh, and but I'm gonna use it now. Where's the other guy? Oh, he's still there. Uh, I'm gonna wait. I'm just gonna do this one. Yeah, it's very successful also. Uh, but I'm mean, just put her in front of it, put on my shield. And uh, he can't move anymore, so that's good. The other guy very enthusiastically coming towards us. Uh, she's going to use her guiding bolt, which in general attempts to kill them in one shot. There you go, 15 of damage. 
and then uh, we're gonna shoot. You fight well. <laughs> Exciting. Uh, uh, let's see what this guy has. He's got a silver locket and dagger. I don't need a dagger. I got one already. But the rapier, I might want to use. Uh, so let's put that one on. Uh, there we go. And uh, go forward and explore a little bit more. See what the world has to offer us. Get out of Northwood also. So, um, like in all of our games, you can move things in the environment, uh, but we've, we've added a whole bunch of stuff that you can do. So you can, for instance, make a stair. Why would you make a stair? Well, because we want to walk on it, of course. So we do that. Oh, shit. It's fine. You're doing great. It's fine. Alright, well, uh, <laughs> alright, I think, uh, <laughs> okay, so here's another example of why you would want to do uh, turn-based mode, uh, say that you want to kill this boar or talk to it or whatever, um, you can now uh, just press the button and then you can just uh, plan your move, close to it, and then it has six seconds, so if I press my space bar now, it will move for six seconds and then it's my turn. We'll, uh, we'll use this to surprise people and sneak up on them and uh, hopefully do it really well. Um, I'm just gonna try to jump over, although I think actually, well, no, I'll just do it. Do you think you can make this jump without dying? She can, she can, she can, she can. She's, uh, she's pretty badass normally, so it's uh, usually a star in the dice. Uh, so this is an example of a passive check. So my nature skill was used to discover uh, something. And so uh, if it would have failed, I wouldn't have found it, of course. So I found a little cache. The cache belongs to uh, the harpers. Uh, so it gives me a little secret. But it's especially this thing that I need. This is a potion of speed. Uh, it will uh, double my, mo uh, my movement points. And it's going to also allow me uh, to get two actions, which is really good. Because we're going to try a very complicated stunt. Will probably succeed or fail. Uh, see what I did there, but probably succeed or fail. Uh, okay. No, well, actually, first we're going to go to camp. This seems as good a place as any to make camp and rest. Might as well adapt the day walker's ways. <laughs> so your camp is a place that's going to expand over time. Uh, you will be able to get followers in your camp. Uh, your companions will obviously be here also. And so uh, there's a lot of relationship building happening in your camp. I'm not sure this is a good idea. I can tell her not to question me. Uh, or... <laughs> Uh, but I'm going to try to befriend her, so I'm uh, uh, going to ask her what she means. There are lit fuses in our heads. Sooner or later, they're going to blow. Each hour that passes, the thing inside us grows. We need to find a healer. Let's wake up at first light. Uh, okay, so I'm going to agree with her, uh, because finding help is indeed our very first concern. Maybe we'll get lucky. We're overdue some good fortune. Rest well. We'll need our strength. Rest. I tried to rest, but my mind wouldn't settle. Just yesterday, I had been seducing a young noble, luring him to my master's lair. Since then, I've been kidnapped by mind flayers, chased through hell by dragons, and fallen from the sky. And I felt the sun on my skin. I should have burst into flames. So I can ask myself questions. It will be the moment of introspection. Um, I can think of my master 
be, we will be furious. It could be a vampire spawn. Uh, yeah, actually, it's a good question. Can a vampire spawn even become a mind player? The worm in my head might not even have an appetite for undead meat. Until I knew more about the tadpole, I wasn't sure how much danger I was in. I had to understand it, master it. I needed to find someone who knew more about this thing. So uh, I'm going to try to, to get some sleep, and I'm going to imagine uh, dragging my old master into the sunlight. And that's a persuasion against myself, so I need to roll, uh, uh, I need to do an intelligence check, basically. <laughs> right on target. So. So the way that works is actually there's a built modifiers on it, and but we just show you the actual DC that that, that comes out at the end. Um, I drifted off with a smile, meditating on the flames that engulfed his cruel face. So he's gonna be happy in the morning. Um, okay, let's continue our little adventure. So all of the dialogues in the game, like literally all of them, have been performance captured, voice uh, recorded, given cinematic treatment. Uh, there uh, hasn't been any compromise because of all the cinematics that we're doing in there, so there's plenty of permutations. And you need to realize that I'm now playing with Astarian, so if we wouldn't be playing with Astarian, we would have different things happening to us. And you'll see that we've gone very far in this. There may be even more than survive a crash. Dead goblins over there. Worth checking for supplies, maybe. All right, let's have a look at what the goblins have. This is a shitty boat. Shitty sort. I need those, I noticed already. No, everything is useless here. I'm gonna go over there. Alive! That's unexpected. Last I saw you, you were lying in a crucible's worth of blood. An intellect devourer nibbling at your ear. Glad to see my eyes deceive me. I'm Gale. Well met. So my vampire option is that I send something off. I was certain he would taste like bile. Uh, I can obviously draw my weapon because I don't trust the guy. Uh, well, I'm going to take the vampire one. Speechless? Might be the shock. We went through a traumatizing experience, if an instructive one. I asked if by trauma he referred to the thing they put in my eye. Yes. The ocular penetration by an illithid tadpole, which will end with our souls being snuffed like strands of weave caught in dead magic. Not to mention, you're staring at me like a Rashimi at a blackboard. You're no wizard, are you? Um, I can obviously just decide to feed. Um, but um, I will tell him that I don't take kindly to insults. Thin-skinned and a dodger of questions. Usually means the answer's no. Guess that'll have to wait. Primary need now is a healer. I take it you recall the insertion of the parasite? Uh, not only did I recall it, I said I was already enjoying its effects, referring to the fact that I can walk in the sunlight. Interesting. Are you aware that after a period of excruciating gestation, it'll turn us into mind flayers? A process known as seromorphosis? It is to be avoided. I assume you're no accomplished healer, either. Powerful cleric, maybe? Okay, was this a conversation or an interrogation? Just trying to figure out where we stand. Conclusion? Nowhere. You and I are in a whole lot of trouble. We need help, and I'm not sure where we'll find it in this wilderness. How about we embark on the quest for a healer together? Yes, I need a, a wizard. A wizard is going to be very Most good. Most excellent. Then, without further ado, let's be off. Besides, looks like you keep some interesting company. A woman with shadows for eyes. Deep as the dark lake. Pleasure, madam. Is it indeed? We'll see. All right. We're going to get along smashing me. Um. Let's get over there. I'm just going to do a few things for... Oh, yeah, actually, I did kill them, so we're good. Um, so I'm going to separate him from my party, because I know what's coming, so I want to show you something. And I'm gonna go with them. Well, actually, I'm first gonna position him. Because these guys, this can turn out badly as a combat. Uh, so I'm gonna go over here. See me yet. Then I'm gonna jump here. And then I'm gonna sneak. 
And so the way sneaking works in the uh, Baldur's Gate 3 is that if you see a shadow, it's going to lightly obscure you. All right? And if you walk into the sunlight, you are going to be in uh, the clear area. So when you're in a clear area and you get seen, uh, you are called on sight. If you go into a uh, obscured area, then you have to roll stealth um, d20 and uh, yeah, if you get caught, uh, you get caught. But you might actually succeed. If you're heavily obscured, uh, as you will soon see, uh, you can actually just walk right past them. It's kind of cool because every single shadow uh, suddenly has use. Uh, but it also means that you can manipulate shadows because you can put light or you can move light. Uh, anyway. He's here standing on his crate, because that's what he does. Um, so I'm just going to leave him here. And then uh, I'll go over here. And I'll, uh, well, yeah, why not? I'll demonstrate a small thing that I just discovered this morning. So normally what I do here, is well, first of all, I show that you still have all kinds of environmental interactions that you can use, everything that makes sense within the world of Dungeons & Dragons we've uh, put in. So uh, you can vaporize water with fire. Uh, but um, there's also other cool things that you do. So normally I just show this and I say, okay, well, this is where we are. We start from here. Basically, I do it to show that you can navigate over a very high and vertical world. Uh, but I figured that if I cast Featherfall, then I make a jump. Boom. Okay. So she still has Featherfall. Oh, yeah. if, I, if she would have jumped without Featherfall, maybe we can do that too. Uh, <laughs> she will die. Uh, anyway, now he has to walk back, but <laughs> let me just do that. Featherfall is a very useful spell. The game has an enormous amount of verticality. We'll never get to the places where the verticality is high today, uh, because uh, yeah, we just don't have enough time and we introduce it uh, gradually to players. Uh, but you, you will be surprised by how much stuff you can do. You can walk on roofs, uh, you can jump all the way down into very, very, very deep holes. Uh, just don't forget the feather fall. The problem with feather falls is it takes up a, uh, if you if you use it. Uh, well, never mind. I'm, I'm not going to say that. Uh, all right, let's um, do the thing I was supposed to do. Okay. So and let's regroup them. There's a small problem with the interface here, so you're not always seeing if they're grouped, but they should be grouped. Hopefully, no, you're not grouped. They want to be grouped. You're grouped. Okay. So let's go meet these fine gentlemen and um, say hello to them. You both twice as tall as me, but I'm half the bloody backbone. But we don't know what that thing even is. And what about the crypt? I'm telling you, it's a ship. And the crypt can wait. Mari and Barton have been trying to break in for days. Now we stop. Got ourselves competition already. That's our ship. Okay, so we have a bunch of persuasion options. Uh, I can tell them that I was just looking around. Tell them that the ship was full of monsters. Uh, my many comrades were coming. Um, or I can try to in intimidate them. I'm gonna tell them there's plenty of monsters. And then that's gonna be a roll. It's going to be a fail, failed roll, which is fine. I mean, it's uh, You're all it's hot okay. air. Think you can get us to leave that bounty to you? Not a chance. What are you lot waiting for? Get her! Okay. So... Uh, luckily for me, I planned for this. And so, if you do a shot out of a sneak position, that is a 100% chance. And so... That works. Okay, so uh, that was my action for this one. So let's try to do this really well. Uh, I'm going to use uh, Grease. So Grease is going to create difficult terrain for these guys. And difficult terrain is basically going to half their movement speed as they're trying to go over it. Uh, so that's good. I, also, we made Grease flammable, uh, so if I can uh, put fire on it, it's going to hurt them double. Uh, unfortunately, I have no source of fire anymore because I used up my, uh, my fire uh, bolt. So, Shadow Heart. Oh, 
however, is going to use her both at the five percent chance. This, I think this guy is the strongest. I'm going to do it on, on that one. Let's see. Uh, oh. Oh, she's, well, somebody's gonna have to stand there to attack the other guy. She has the. She can increase her AC. Okay. So there to her. Turn. Not down. Ah! Missed. That's good. Witch Bolt, so she can, every turn, as long as she's concentrated, she's gonna be able to hurt me. So I need to do something about that. Otherwise, this guy's trying to go up to get his advantage back. <laughs> he changed his mind. <laughs> I, uh, I wonder if he's having a problem here. <laughs> Might be in an eternal loop. Uh, all right, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to use a cheat here. Uh, no, oh, okay, so. wow. Okay. Difficult. Oh, yeah, no, it did work. I actually destroyed his ladders uh, secretly with a, se a secret button, which will remain secret. Uh, advantage of a, a development version. Um, okay, well, let's just do it to see what it gives. Right, throw item. It's not that bad. You can actually jump on them also, and that hurts them too. So with a warrior with feather fall, you could for instance combine that and then jump on somebody. That can hurt. However, this was actually really I bet that it was just a throw, I can still shoot. I need to make this hit because otherwise Shadow Heart is gonna be in trouble. Um doesn't have to be a pin down. 75% chance. Oh that's Okay, good. So uh, that means that she is now home free. She can. Uh, why doesn't she have her spell slot on? Forty percent is not good. I'm going to disengage using my jump. I can do this once in combat. Okay. Um, and I'll just. I was a little bit too enthusiastic in sending Gale went away. So I'm starting to interesting. Oh, that's good. <laughs> yeah. That was that was good actually. Uh, this changes things completely. Alright. Uh, um, all right, Shadowheart, how far are you? He's gonna keep on hitting it, right? So. Well, we're gonna try to. You know, we're gonna shoot her. She's still far from us. Maybe I don't have any fire left. can dash. Okay, I was gonna make her dash. That gives her double movement speed. Well, I'm not gonna get very far, but I'm getting a bit farther. Uh, and, uh, that cancels the entire effect. But maybe if I yell at him, I can't yell, I don't have a yell yet. We will have that, but... Um, uh, not dead yet. Pity that they can't, well... <laughs> well uh, okay, now we, we need to make this. We're not gonna die here. I gotta think. Do not want to restart again. 
Say it again. Oh, yes. Thank you. That's why you guys are here. Shadow Heart has it. But we do have, ma we have magic pockets. We have magic pockets. You're basically telling me to run away, right? Oh, well, I, have an, I have an excellent idea. This is going to work really well. Um, so let me... Well, let me first try killing him, actually. Did I throw something already? Oh, but I can still do my cantrip, apparently. Aha. I have my second action, though. I want to run away. Uh, let's run this part. Well, actually... I can shoot him again. Oh. Good work. Ah. So the cool part is... Well, let's first see which direction they're going to go. Actually, because I can go back. Uh, he's not going to make it. But she can still make it. If I can get close to her and give her a helping hand, so she's going to be up again. Uh, okay, where are you? You're there, right? What I don't want to do is get too close to you. But I can get back here, actually. hard work though. Uh, oh, actually, but what I can still do... No, I get to shoot again, it's right. I keep on forgetting this. Uh, I got the second action. Alright, okay. Uh, well. Uh, my boots. Uh, yeah, it, uh, it happens that you miss a lot. Why did he get two shots anyway? Did he take potion himself? It's possible. So the AI thinks, looks at everything that it... Ah. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Alright, so out of combat, their death saving throw... Oh, she's really dead? She's dead dead. Yeah, he's alive. That's, that's good, I guess. That's a We'll worry about her later. We'll leave her there. She deserves it. Uh, well, let's first see what they had to pick up. I mean, I can't reach. Standing next to her. There you go. Let's actually... Uh, let's give this to Gail. Uh, you know, have fancy stuff. Make him look more like a real wizard. He's a rope. A beard now. Um, guys, it's worth mentioning, of course, that the you can play the game in multiplayer also. Uh, and so, in multiplayer, uh, you can be multiple origin stories, etc. Uh, well, etc. I have to mention it. Uh, you can play as uh, everybody's a hero essentially in the multiplayer story. So, and um, there's a whole bunch of that functionality. Uh, it's going to be very cool. It's going to enjoy playing multiplayer. Uh, like, for instance, being able to participate in each other's dialogue, seeing what the other options uh, another person is considering. Something that can be quite intense, as you'll see soon enough. Okay, so uh, we're gonna go inside here. Thank you, Gimbalbok! Everything all right out there? Uh, I'm gonna claim to be Gimbalbok and ask him to let me in. Don't worry, we're safe. If it fails, we're okay. Uh, <laughs> All right. You sound a bit shaken, boss. Hang on while I find the key. Right. You're dead! Nope, you're dead.
them. And the reason why is because I, I surprise them and then when you surprise somebody you get the initiative. Uh, and so this guy has absolutely no chance. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here. I'm going to shoot and put him down. There you go. And then I'm going to shoot at him again. The next turn. Is he gone? There you go. And then I know he's going to try to run away towards his buddies. So I played this before, which is fine. I'm going to shoot him again. There you go. And that's how easy it can be. <laughs> Alright. Let's see where we end up. So we're now in a small dungeon. We're going to do a Asari in the Great Tomb Raider. Um, so he's going to do all of this on his own. Alright. Just as a demonstration of how systemic use of all the systems can lead oh, to great crap. success. Actually, did I pick up my boots again? Dust. No, I'm bootless. Alright. Switch the lights off. I'm going to go sneak mode. Just play it carefully. And I'm going to put myself into forced turn base mode. And I'm going to try to sneak up behind this one so I can uh, kill her. She's probably going to start turning back, so I'm going to go and stand the corner here. I'm heavily obscured, right? So if I don't come too close, they are not going to detect me. All right. Oh, she's going to stand there? No, there she is. This is the reason why. Anyway. So you have a little hole here. Why? Because this light is creating a zone that she can see in, and then the zone just in front of her. But here, if I were standing here, I, I would have been actually okay. So let her come back. Oh, I call that. No, no. sneak attack, so if I do it from melee, I get 1d6 extra damage was... Uh, Why aren't you... Back off. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's not that bad. Um, I'm not gonna bite her yet, I'm gonna keep my bite for later. Uh, oh man, come on, really? actually that's what's suggested that. <laughs> and somebody put a pitch barrel here for me That I'm, I'm gonna try to get into this place, but. No lock, no handle. How does it open? Well, I happen to know, so small spoiler. Uh, so let me just do the same thing here. Try not to ruin it this time. So I'm gonna go in here, force turn base. So we're gonna create a zone of darkness. Uh, so. Zone of darkness is basically going to cover me like this, so that he can't see me while I'm in there. Um, so and then just wait, pass by. So zone of darkness essentially blocks the the, the vision zone. Never 
mind, but he does. At least there's no skeletons this time. Nope. Let's go this way. And I want to. I hope it's going to work here. Really? It's not going to work? Ah, there you go. That's curious. I needed this handle because this handle is a secret handle that opens the door on the other side. Right. So now I'm going to just try to do it the other way. This guy will never know what's happened to him. That was actually quite close. Right. So now he can see me. working on better visualization of this so uh, I doubt that you're gonna have it exactly like this when, when you get the blades but starring the great Tomb Raider has managed to do something without being detected which is quite an achievement all right let's continue so our door is open of going wrong uh, so I'll, I'll do my utter best uh, this is a uh, yeah, that's curious a, a tomb there's dangerous things here there's skeletons lying on the floor and then there's uh, things that are uh, popping up and I have perception checks that are succeeding that are failing so you know that something's gonna happen and then there's this big thing in the middle so <laughs> inside you find a cool weapon uh, and a key and a skull so we're gonna take everything and then you have grease appearing everywhere, and then you got fire appearing, and so, but, I knew exactly where to stand. <laughs> and I'm gonna enter turn-based mode, because turn-based mode is also something that you can use to navigate traps. So you got six seconds to think, and then the traps get their turn, and you get your turn, so you get the, the gist. And so the way that I figured out getting out of here is Mage Hand. Mage Hand can throw stuff, and so what I can do so that I can make my own stairs, so I can make a stair out of here. Mage hand is just gonna go over here. Well, that's a evil trap to their thing. And then go back to Mage Hand. And I gotta do it the way that the way that I'm doing it because I practiced this and when I uh, did it wrongly, I threw it too far, the crate got damaged, and then I jumped on top of it, and then the crate got destroyed, and then I died anyway, so... <laughs> uh, there we go. Okay, one more. So, having turn-based mode allows us to do much cooler traps and not having you to require to have lightning fast reflexes uh, in what is the game, which has many, many spells, many, many actions that you can do. Uh, so. It's kind of handy to have. All right. Also solves the problem if you want to talk to very fast creatures. No, no, no! Sorry. No. Don't fall. Please don't fall. Okay. I'm gonna do my little jump now. Space. What do you mean there's not enough space? There is enough space. Apparently not. Oh yeah. I wonder if that's a bug that I have. No. Oh, there you go. Okay, so that should work. There we go. Ah, this builder blocks me. So I'm gonna send the mate. No! <laughs> <laughs> oh man, why do you have to follow mage hands? Alright, let's 
Let's see. Oh, well, that's good. That's handy, Mage Hand. Your perception check was successful. It's not supposed to have a perception check, but it's good of Mage Hand to do it. But that, that's cool because then I can actually throw this thing on that. There we go. But that way, there's no more grease coming out of it. And I'm going to jump. Oh, yeah, I use my jump. I think I can make it. Maybe if I dash. Stop. All right. This is a bit harder than I expected it to be. <laughs> uh, so let me. Well, I know what I'm going to do. All right. This, this is going to be a little bit uh, non orthodox, but. There you go. Ah. And that's going to take that grease away. And let's just see what happens when I get out of turn base. My crate is broken. Well, I'll bet I made a corridor here, so that's good. So, so now we know that we can't trust. I uh, have my dash. Where's my dash? Let's dash. I'll get out of here eventually, but hopefully today. I guess I can walk over there and stand in the grease for a second. jump. No, you just have to get there now. Well, one more turn now. I'm not jinxed it. Okay. Can I dash again? Yeah, that should do it. Don't fall. Don't fall. Okay, we made it outside of the very evil trap. <laughs> so we're gonna get to the final room of this mini dungeon. So this is the kind of situation you'll find yourself in if you're in multiplayer and you're just dashing off and leaving your party behind. You can always manage. Uh, it's just sometimes a little bit tricky. So many no signs of a struggle. So, we're entering a big room, and so the you see a bunch of skeletons on the floor, so you are all gamers, so you know what's gonna happen. These guys are gonna race. So here's a little trick I figured out, is I can take their weapons away. Now, unfortunately, because disarming somebody is actually a uh, valid action, um, AI developers are making it so that they will pick up the weapons that they, uh, if they see something on the floor and they're unarmed, the AI will actually come to the same co conclusion on its own. Uh, but luckily, not implemented yet. <laughs> so we can take advantage of this today. I'm gonna give this guy a sword just so that we can see the difference between the guys. Um, did I have all of them? I just wanna make sure that the guys with the bow don't have a you have a bow? Ah, oh, there's another marksman over there, yeah. So I'm gonna try the final heist of this little tomb raiding adventure, and if I fail, they'll, they'll spot me. And then when they spot me, what's going to happen is that they are going to, uh, well, they'll shoot me, and then I'll die, and then it's these fellas that have to come back and get me, and they are obviously uh, not very good at it, as you can see from their health bar. I'll then consider whether or not I'm gonna resurrect them. Um, Oh no. Okay, my perception failed. So I need Gale. So, but Gale has a shortcut. There was actually a. Oh, he can also bring a starting food back. Uh, <laughs> so there's an actual shortcut, but I didn't want to do it because when you do it, it alerts the guards on the inside and they all gang up and then I can't do a starting on his own. Uh, if you shoot this thing and somebody's standing under it, he'll die. Uh, but uh, it also creates a hole uh, in the floor. And so. Like this, I can jump in it. Yep. And then we find ourselves into this room here. And then like this, I can open this room. So that was a shortcut. But then they 
basically all the bandits that are in this dungeon then stand outside of this door and they're ready to, to kill you. Um, where is it? Oh, there it is. Okay, let's go that way. So he'll have a better chance of doing a, succeeding in a history check. Which I think... Uh, no, it's a perception though, actually. Well, let's just try it out. Maybe we'll, we won't open it today, so that's another secret. The game is full of secrets, exploration is heavily rewarded. Uh, you will never see all the secrets in one go, it's impossible. Uh, so if you're min-maxer, you will curse at us. Yeah, thank you. Alright, I'm gonna get you out of here because otherwise I can't do my little Astarian on all alone stunt. Um, so I'm gonna send you over here, this is the exit. So this is where in a second Astarian will have to manage get himself. Okay. Press the button. Click. We get inside here. A lot of effort to hide one sarcophagus. Indeed. I wonder what will happen. Uh, just in case. So the reason why we came here is because we wanted, uh, we have poison, that's fine, because we can throw poison at people, but not at skeletons, of course. Uh, but there's Amulet of Joy and Sorrow, which gives me the Speak with Dead spell. So Speaking with Dead is something uh, that you can do with the Amulet, provided they have a mouth. Oh, hell, something just woke up. Unfortunately, I don't have my. Sp I just realized that this is the reason I keep my speed potion in general. Uh, let's see. Uh, why are you standing here anyway? Right, let's just hug the wall and wait for him to move. also why we need some better indications so that we're working on uh, because this looks bright because the artist put the light here but for the game it's actually it's a, it's a heavily obscured zone so, so we'll, this, these kind of things that we still need to fix uh, all right i'll be good i think with the potion of speed i was already out of here somebody made me drink it right? <laughs> thank you for that but ooh. Well, I'm heavily obscured. They actually have dark vision, so they actually, it should have been a check. Uh, so I think that the system doesn't register it fast enough. Uh, yeah. They, the dark vision does work, yeah, so. But it's fine, it's good. I mean, like, look, we're almost at the exit. Yeah, and they have no arrows, they have no bows, they have no weapons, look at it, they all have their hands. Like. <laughs> so, this is exactly how it should be. Uh, the AI is trying to figure out what the hell am I going to do. Uh, I'm going to dash, uh, where's my dash? That's going to allow me to get very far. Okay, and then... Don't do anything. Yeah. All right. And then that's my movement bar, by the way. Uh, so the amount of movement I have. Gale joins the thing, the action. Oh, I only have five minutes left. Oh shit. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Yeah. I, I was. My phone is charging. I forgot my timer. So. <laughs> Alright, well let me, I, I wanted to show you one last thing, so a little bit of audience participation. Um, so let me try to do that as fast as I can. Oh.
he, he gave up. <laughs> he was like, I'm done. No, I don't think I'm going to get out of it. Well, that's a real pity. <laughs> if I manage... I, 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 I'm thinking that if I manage to click it in here, I can manage... Oh, let me do... Let me do this one thing. No, she's two. <laughs> no, who's having... Oh, it's the hand. No, it's not the hand. No, 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 no. Uh, well, okay, well, since I only have five minutes, uh, that will be uh, the end of my presentation for today. <laughs> time for a few questions, Jesse. If he's Do we? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's already a guy lining up. Go for it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I've never played Baldur's Gate before, and based on what I've seen so far, I really, really, really want to now. Um, however, my luck is abysmal. What advice do you have for, for, uh, for someone with awful luck other than You're playing asking luck? him? <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Other than playing on easy. <laughs> um, yeah, so there's ways that you can uh, modify your dice. You seek out advantage, which gives, allows you to roll twice. Uh, so that's something that's important. We will have an easier mode. We still have to balance stuff also. Uh, so the values that you're seeing right now were pretty much straight out of the book. Uh, so sometimes it's fairly harsh. Uh, but we'll make sure that uh, when it gets to you, this is one of the reasons we're going to early access, uh, it will be manageable, because as you can see, it's very brutal sometimes. Uh, thank you. Can't wait to play it. Thank you. Hi. So, quick question. Is it possible to restat your companions? Uh, sorry, say that again? Can you restat your companions? Uh, so, yes, you will be able to modify your companions' uh, ability points uh, and uh, their class... Uh, I, 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 yeah, I can't answer that question yet. Okay, thank you. So the reason why I couldn't answer your question is because it's a point of discussion right now. Uh, so, uh, for spell slots, do they recharge after a long rest or after uh, long rest? Long rest. Okay. Yeah. So you need to go back to camp. Actually, the next thing that we were going to do was resurrect them and go to camp and have a camp moment so that we would respec, and then we actually had a big finale, but we never got there. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about making you use that potion. Uh, <laughs> uh, I know you said this is early access and everything, but there's one interaction that happened that I have to ask about. You didn't tell anyone you were a vampire, and you walk up in the camp, oh, I'm going to do like the daywalkers do, look at their companion. I didn't mean that. Uh, <laughs> Was that a, a bug in the system where she's supposed to react or? Uh, in the cinematic, you mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there was, a, so there was a small moment of a note that it froze there. Okay. And you didn't get anything. Okay, thank you. Uh, hi. Um, I wanted to ask uh, what consoles is this game going to be coming on? I know it's coming out on like Stadia, I think. But, yeah, so uh, we've only there... announced uh, PC and Stadia. All That's right. all we're talking about for now. All right, cool. So, understanding that this game is uh, pretty much removed from the previous two Baldur's Gate games, is there a chance that we might see characters from our previous adventures, such as a particular ranger with a hamster companion? Uh, so, we're only talking about the five companions that we're showing today, unfortunately. Uh, so, I can't answer that question. Uh, just curious, uh, the part where you attacked the, your companion, I noticed that was uh, sort of a real-time combat. Are we going, is it going to be strictly uh, turn-based like we yep. saw, or uh, yeah, are so, we going to have the option uh, for that? Everything is happening in turn-based, uh, so that was actually, she didn't react to it. She should have reacted, but her reaction system isn't ready yet, uh, so she should have reacted to the fact that I stabbed her. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, so, uh, but no, combat is turn-based, Dungeon and Dragons is turn-based, and we wanted to do a, a port that was as faithful as we could, but still make for a good video game. And by doing it this way, we can actually pretty much do one-on-one -on -one mapping of a lot of 
of systems, and that works quite well. So I'm a big fan of Bowler's Gate. Um, I had a question, is there going to be like an alignment system? Is it going to impact with kind of how the storyline plays out? And how you can so uh, in fifth edition, alignment is less pronounced than it used to be. Uh, so and w when we started out working on it, uh, we actually also had in our heads we're going to make alignment a really big thing. But then Wizards actually asked us a little bit to tone it down because they didn't want it to make it that, that black and white anymore. Um, however, you are going to, de depending on your actions, so you have good characters. Gale is a good character, for instance. He's not going to stay very long with you if you're going to keep on doing very, very, very crazy evil things. And it's a real pity that we didn't get to the end of my presentation because I was going to do the ultimate evil thing. I was going to bite one of my companions at night. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, but it failed. But there will be a lot of press up and you will be able to see it in the stuff that they have uh, to talk about. And I was going to let you decide whether or not we're going to do the bite, and then whether or not we're going to completely drain my companion or leave a little bit of blood and all that. And you know kind of follow. Yes. You know, you know, we would have told you to do it. <laughs> yes, of course. I mean, but you—it's your choice, right? So if you roll with your choices. And there's, then there's a d20 that you have to roll to make see it, to do, to see if she actually detects it or not, uh, which is kind of cool. And kind of follow up to that: Will your actions affect your alignment? Like, if you start off good and make a bunch of evil choices. Uh, so whether whether your alignment is going to change. Uh, so we actually don't show alignments right now in the game. Uh, so there is no modification of alignment for the moment. Hi, Sven. It's me. Hi, Adam. Manchester United 3, Club Bruges 0. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> so that's Adam Smith. He's one of the senior writers on Baldur's Gate 3. He's a Manchester United fan. I'm from Bruges in Belgium. And our teams were playing now as the presentation started. And so we just felt this was necessary. <laughs> hey there, huge fan of you guys. Um, I had a quick question regarding early access. Could you talk a little bit more about that? Like, rough estimate for a release date, how much of the campaign's gonna be ready, anything like that? Uh, wait, there's somebody waving with a time. Does that mean I have to shut up? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, to, to answer your question, uh, so we're going to roll it into early access when bugs like what you saw are all gone. Uh, we're very curious to uh, get the community feedback, so that's the thing that's very important for us. Uh, we'll make sure there's enough content in there to keep you busy. We'll make sure that you don't have all the content so that when the release comes, you'll get plenty of content to play through, pretty much like we did with our previous games. Uh, but I can't give you the exact figures on that just yet. All right, I guess that's going to be the last question. All right, thank you. Legendary heroes. One man will rise to take all of the credit. This game has something that no one else will. Me. We go to work, 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 work. This is where the magic happens. Hey, can I get a coffee? I'm coming on! Everybody has that game that they fell in love with because they make an impact. Those games were somebody's legacy. Well, this is my legacy. Our legacy. Our legacy, whatever. It's not my legacy. I have a BA in women's studies. What exactly?